Today, let's make a faux fur crop jacket using a free pattern. Welcome, I do sewing and DIY related content and today I'm going to be using the Mood Society the Dean Jacket Pattern to make a cropped faux fur coat. Now I saw someone else do this on Instagram and I will be sure to include in the link their jacket as well. It looked really, really nice, but I have all this faux fur. And when I had asked originally, what should I be doing with all this faux fur? Someone had said like a jacket or a vest. And I think that this jacket's gonna work really well for it. This is actually menswear. So I sized myself the smallest size that this jacket came in. And then I have all of this white faux fur and I am just going to start cutting out how much fabric I will need for each element. Now, the big thing is that this jacket normally would have sort of like some rib knit along the bottom as well as the collar and the cuffs, I'm going to be skipping that and also making it shorter, so doing some pattern hacking. So as you can see here, this is the front and back. I am taking off about four inches. I did create a mock-up to see how long I would want it to be. And basically for mine, it was about four inches shorter than what the original pattern was. Once I had that figured out though, I began cutting everything out. Now this faux fur was really thick. And as you can see on the pattern, I am cutting it a little bit smaller than what I had the pattern pieces cut out for. And that's because I am going to be trying to make this jacket the correct way. So not doing this pattern hack for my husband a little bit later on. So I wanted to just have to cut out all the paper once. As you can see though, I really tried to make sure that I was getting that cropped effect for everything. I cut out all the original pattern pieces though. The only items I did not cut out with the faux fur was the cuffs and the waistband and then I also did have a white lining the cat was helping the entire time she really likes the faux fur material um, I had a lining that I used too now for some of these pieces where you had to fold them over because the faux fur is so thick I just cut out one half of it and then I used lining this is what everything looks like though after the fact of cutting it out stuffing was watching too it was very very messy but I did eventually get everything cut out as far as fabric goes and the lining so now it was time to just kind of lay everything out and we'll walk through what we have. So this is all the different pieces. I have the sleeve cuffs. I did cut them out, but I'm not going to use them. Then I had the collar that I cut out some of the fur as well as a lining for. I have the sleeves, both the under sleeve as well as the full sleeve. And then I have where the buttons are gonna be going. So for this is where I folded the pattern piece over. So one half of it is the actual fur and the other half is the lining. And then I have the front of the jacket mirrored with both a lining as well as the faux fur. And then I think everything else is just a few little extra fur pieces that I have. And then I did cut out everything as it showed on the jacket. So you can see that there is a pocket that this comes with. I did not cut out the pocket though. I'm not going to be adding a pocket to this jacket as I think it would just be too hard with the fur. And then I did, when I originally said like I'd cut out the sleeve cuff and decide not to use it, the sleeves were just really long and I did not need it to be that long. And I thought that the cuff would just really kind of add bulk to it. So I'm deciding just to have it be one long sleeve and then I'll just take a hem along each sleeve to close it off. So the first step of the pattern it was just to sew the sleeve portions together. So that main sleeve as well as the under portion of the sleeve. And this was actually following the directions exactly that were on the Mood Society site. So I did not change anything with this. I just sewed up both portions of the sleeve as well as doing this as well for the lining so that I could get all the sleeve pieces together. Next, I went ahead and started pinning up the yoke for the back. So I had both that fur piece as well as the lining. So again, this was following the steps exactly that the Dean jacket had on the society page. So I was not changing anything at this point. I was just following exactly what they were doing. The only slight differences would be that my pieces were a little bit smaller since I was making it that cropped effect. Once I did this for the lining, I went ahead and did this for my faux fur. As you're gonna see with the faux fur, it's actually two different colors. And that's because I didn't have enough of this cream. So I'm using a white and I think it's gonna add a nice contrast. I have the white also included in the collar so that it kind of stands out and it's kind of like a two-tone jacket. So now it was just time to sew up the sleeves as well as the back yoke and get the jacket started. 
Now for both these items, I was able to use just like a universal needle, but if you have any issues with especially sewing through the lining, I would say to maybe change needles while you're doing this if you are using like a thicker needle for your faux fur. I then pressed everything out and then for the faux fur, I did get a comb and tried to brush out the seams. That way you couldn't see the seam as much and it just made it much fluffier. And I found that this actually helped a lot with trying to get off a lot of that extra fabric. Then I did really grade my seams so that I was making sure that there wasn't a lot of bulk. The faux fur is very bulky, so just make sure you're really trimming those seams the best that you can. So now it was time to sew the jacket, essentially the front and the back together. So sewing those shoulder seams as well as the side seams. Again, all of this was following the pattern exactly. And then I did repeat this for the lining so that I would have both completed. So I used pins for most of this with my faux fur. I found it easier. The quilting clips were just a little bit too small for it. So I would highly recommend, you know, using pins if you are making the faux fur jacket as well. Once I had all of that done, it was then just time to sew it up. So here is what my jacket currently looks like. We have a vest. <laughs> so you have the front and the back and you can see the two tone effect. Right now, I feel like it did look a little stark, but when everything comes together, it does look much better. So now it is time to start building out our sleeves fully. So I'm just gonna be sewing up the edges of the sleeves, again, using my pins with right side together and just take that one long seam all the way up the side for each sleeve as well as for the lining of the sleeve. So here is what my coat currently looks like. I did attach one sleeve to see how it would look as a test and it's turning out really nicely. So now it is time to do the sleeve on the other side. So when you cut out the pattern piece, you did need to add a notch to your sleeve. So you can see I just cut into my faux fur. I found that was the easiest way to make a notch with this fabric. And then there is a notch on the jacket as well. And you're gonna be matching those up and then pinning the sleeve with right sides together to the jacket all the way around that sleeve opening. So I found that especially making sure that the notches were matched, this actually wasn't too difficult of a task to do. I just went through, pinned everything up for the outside of the jacket, for the sleeve, and then it just took a seam all the way around. Now you are going to then repeat all of these exact same steps for the lining. So basically you're making like almost two different coats as then we're just gonna be combining them together. So again, very similar, just doing those same steps of adding the sleeve to the lining with right sides together and then sewing it all the way up. So next it was time to add the fabric where the button would be going. So again, I had cut this out so that it was actually half the size of what the original pattern piece was. And then in addition, I did start to add the collar. So the first thing I did was using the guideline for where the buttons would be going. I marked with a pin where the buttons were just because this fabric is really difficult to see through. So this was a lot easier for me. And then I was also just very careful of where my fingers were going near the pins. I found this worked really well though. So just marking out the buttons on either side so that when this goes attached to the jacket, I'll know where to put them. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew up both the collars for the lining and the jacket. And then we can actually begin working on adding that button portion too. So as you can see here, I've already added one of those button pieces to the main portion of the jacket. So it just goes on the front of the jacket, attaches to where the collar is. And we are just going to be matching with right sides together that piece of fabric that we had marked for the buttons and then sewing it onto the front of the jacket. So making sure that we get a nice long and even stitch and we're just gonna be sewing that all the way up. And then this is how we're going to be adding our buttons on. And then I did repeat all of those steps for the lining. So again, you're doing everything the same that you are for the outside of the jacket as you are for the lining. So now we've talked about a lot making the lining very similar to outside the jacket. So now it is time to actually combine them together. So with right sides together, you are matching your lining with the right side to the right side of the jacket and just pinning it up all the way down. So where that button portion is, you are matching that to the lining jacket and pinning it all the way down that one side and then pinning it all the way around the collar. And you're just gonna be taking a long seam all the way around, keeping the bottom of the jacket open. That's how we're gonna be turning it. So there's gonna be one really long seam all the way around the jacket, starting on that one side with the buttons going all the way up, going around the collar and then going back down. So this will have us combine our lining of our jacket with the outside of the jacket. And then we are just going to turn this right side out. So essentially putting the lining of the jacket into the jacket itself. So those sleeves going into the sleeves of the outside of the jacket so that everything is nice and lined and neat. So this is currently what it looks like. It looks really good. I'm actually really happy with how it looks. 
looks and excited with the different colors. So now it is just time to really do the finishing touches of like the hem along the bottom of the jacket, finishing off the sleeves and adding the buttons. Now to figure out how much I really wanted to take off the sleeves, I did try the jacket on and then I rolled the sleeve up to get an understanding of how long I wanted it to be, how much room did I have, and then I got some quilting clips to just clip it in place so that I knew how much room I had. I would highly recommend though if you are making this jacket to make sure you try it on before you do hem the sleeves just in case you need to take more off or you need to figure out if there's a way to add a cuff for yourself. Then for the bottom for the hem all the way around, I did a very similar just a short hem as I knew that I wanted it to already kind of stay that length and so just really making sure I'm removing the raw edge. So now I went all the way around, I did hand sew each of the cuffs as I felt like it was going to make it a lot neater and it gave it a really pretty look. So as you can see there are no raw edges, we have everything nice and neat. And then I have gone through and I did pin up using these quilting clips all of the fur on the bottom just so that I'd be able to hold it in place. And I'm going to be doing the exact same hand sewing all the way around to make sure that that stays too. Now the last step for this jacket was the buttons and the buttonholes were so, so difficult because of the fake fur. So part of this was I used my buttonhole foot and then for some of it, I did actually just use my regular sewing machine foot and just kind of trace over where that buttonhole would be just to give it a little bit more support and stability. But the first step when I was attempting to make the buttonholes on this was I figured out where that button would be going and then I did mark it with a marking pen. Now, I'm not the biggest fans of marking pens. I don't think they always work, but that was what I started with. Then I got my scissors and I trimmed some of the faux fur that the button hole would be in just so that the area was not as thick. I found that this really, really helped as you couldn't even notice really that I was removing any of the faux fur, but it just gave it a little bit more of a flat surface to work on. I've heard that some sewing machines have different settings you can use for your buttonhole feet. Mine did not. So a lot of this was trial and error. As you can see here, some buttonholes worked really well. So I was able to get that really nice and smooth professional finish. Others, I did have to go back in and try to reinforce so that it would be able to withstand the buttonhole. I think there were other ways I probably could have done the closure. If I'd wanted to, maybe a snap would have been better and then having a button on the outside so it gave the appearance, but I was able to get the buttons working and the buttonholes are in. So now it was just time to add on the rest of the buttons to my jacket. I got these really fun cream buttons that I thought matched and then I just hand sewed them in place. So here is my completed jacket. I absolutely love it. This really was a fun pattern hack and especially since this is a free pattern, really anyone could make this jacket too. I think the collar looks really nice. The faux fur looks really nice with it and it's definitely a piece that I'm excited to get to wear. I don't know where I'm gonna be wearing it yet, but it was snowing and it just seemed like a really fun opportunity to get to wear this jacket. I will include a link in the description for the original pattern that came from the Mood Fabric website. And then I also made these really fun DIY earmuffs. I will include the YouTube short that I did for that. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.